Hey guys, Mr. B here. We are going to be doing our titration lab today. So I have everything set up here. I put a nice little white background for you so we'll be able to read our burette a little bit. Um, but let me just talk through what we're going to do. So we have a little bit of vinegar here and we are going to see is this vinegar 5% acetic acid like it claims to be? So this is sort of our unknown concentration. We are trying to determine the concentration of our acetic acid in this. In order to do that, we are going to use a known concentration of sodium hydroxide. So we are going to prepare a solution using our large volumetric flask. We are going to know this concentration, and then we're going to put that known concentration in this long tube. We call this our burette. And then we're going to put some acid, our vinegar in the bottom, and we're going to slowly add a little by little our base until it is neutralized. Right? And then we will know that the concentration of our base is equal to the concentration of our acid. We can do some fancy calculations and find the concentrations. However, how are we going to know when it switches from our acid to our base? Well, that's with this little guy here. We've got phenolphthalein, fun word to say. Um, but phenolphthalein is going to turn a nice bright pink color when it is in the presence of base. So it's going to stay acidic, it's going to be vinegar, and we slowly add more and more base until eventually there's going to be just the equal amounts and then it'll switch really quickly to being more base than acid. There's going to be more OH pieces than H plus pieces. Okay, so let's go ahead and get set up. First, we are going to get our sodium hydroxide in solid form and we're going to measure it out. In this case, we have 37.34 grams of sodium hydroxide and we're going to put it in our volumetric flask. This flask has only one marking right here, so we're going to know that this is going to be exactly 1,000 milliliters, and it says plus or minus 0.6 milliliters. We're not going to worry too much about that uh, error. So we're going to add our solid in here, and we are going to add deionized or demineralized water, so there's no extra stuff in it, and then we will be able to know the concentration. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off screen. I'm going to add my base and add my water and mix that up. Alrighty, so now we have our standard solution. We are going to call this our titrant. It's what we are going to do the titration with. Uh, and if you'll notice, I'm wearing gloves now because sodium hydroxide is a base. And even though this is a fairly small concentration, it can still be hygrogoric, hygroscopic, excuse me, which means it absorbs water. And it can be uh, caustic, which means it can eat away at the skin a little bit. So wearing gloves as a safety measure. So we're going to put that to the side for now. Next up, we are going to deal with our acid, which is our distilled white vinegar. Now this claims to be 5% acetic acid by mass. So that means we're going to have a certain amount of our vinegar in milliliters, but we're also going to need the mass of our vinegar as well to do our calculations later on. So I'm going to get 25 milliliters of my vinegar, but I am going to need the mass, so I am going to mass my Erlenmeyer flask before. I'll get that mass. I will add my 25 milliliters to it and I'll get that mass and then we should be able to just subtract those two numbers then we have the mass of just the vinegar. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera as well. Hey, that's done. I now have my 25.1 milliliters. It doesn't have to be exact, but I have 25.1 milliliters of my vinegar in my Erlenmeyer and I have those measurements. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off by adding the indicator. So the indicator, as I mentioned, changes colors based on the pH. So I'm going to have to use two hands here. So I've got my indicator, my phenolphthalein here, and I'm going to go ahead and I am going to drop two little drops of this. It does not take much. One, two. Now as you can see, it turns a nice pink color in the presence of a base. It has gotten a little bit on my gloves, which is why we wear gloves. So I'm just going to put that to the side. So now I have my acid and it's got the indicator in it. If I forget to add the indicator, this will never change color and I will not be able to tell it when, once the acid turns basic and the experiment is ruined. Last thing I need to do to get my experiment ready is to prepare my burette. Now I want this burette to be full of my titrant, my sodium hydroxide base, but before I just fill it all the way up, 
I want to rinse this burette with a little bit of my base. That way I know that it is uh, not contaminated with other stuff. So instead of rinsing it out with water, because that would dilute my concentration that I just figured out, I'm going to rinse it out with a little bit of this, coat the sides, and then I know that it is that exact concentration. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back when I have prepared the burette. Okay folks, it's time for the fun to happen. I now have my burette filled with my sodium hydroxide, I have my Erlenmeyer flask with my acid and my indicator. Now all I need to do is slowly add base until it turns pink and then stop and record my volumes. So I do want to know my volume of sodium hydroxide in the burette at first. I will record that number. I will add the base until it turns pink and then I will record the volume, whatever it is afterwards. And if we subtract those two numbers, then I should have the amount of base that I actually added to my Erlenmeyer flask. So let me go ahead and get this ready. So Erlenmeyer flask in there, and I'm going to slowly add acid until it turns pink and stays pink. So right away, you can start to see a little bit of the color. All right, so it's getting that nice pinkish hue. Let's see if I can get you a little bit closer here, guys. There we go. All right, so we're adding acid and it's turning pink, but watch this. It's gone. Now, why is that? All right, sorry, I've got to fix my angle here. So why is that? Well, remember that acids and bases, they neutralize each other, right? So I'm slowly adding base here and it's turning pink because there's phenolphthalein in there, but then the base spreads out and it interacts with the acetic acid that's in here and it neutralizes and then poof, it disappears. So this is gonna take a while, so I'm going to fast forward uh, until I get to that end point. Once we get really, really close, I can actually use a little bit of deionized water or demineralized water. And if I spray the tip, it takes just a little tiny bit of that base and puts it in. So if I spray just a little bit, you can see it turns purple. Oh my goodness, look at that. I think I did perfect, guys. So sometimes I'm good at this, sometimes I'm not. But if you notice, it is not completely pink, but it is no longer clear. So, not going to lie guys, I'm pretty proud of this. Uh, so this was a pretty good titration. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the final volume. Now it turns out this one ended up a little bit past 34. So that is uh, quite a bit of base. So we're going to take those numbers, subtract them, and then we'll do our calculations. So that's the nerve-wracking patience part. Okay, now watch this. I am going to add just one more drop of my base. And let's see what happens to the color. Look at that. Now you can appreciate just how close that was. I got it to within half a drop. So now it's pink, now it's definitely more basic, but if I add a whole bunch now, let me just put a whole bunch more in. It turns pink, but you know, we can't really tell a huge difference between that and where it was. So that's our experimental data collection part. Now I'm going to do that one more time. I will include those numbers in the data tables. You are not going to have to watch me do this again. Um, but there you have it, a titration experiment. All right, one last thing. So I added a bunch of base, right, and it was very pink. Well, what happens if I add a little bit more acid? Here I have just a little bit of vinegar. If I add some acid back to it, what do you think will happen? Well, just a little bit, still pink. If I add more acid, ta-da, magic. So oftentimes indicators are really good for reversible reactions, ones that can go backwards and forwards. This way we can tell which product or which reactant is present more. In this case now, since it's clear, we know there's more acid than base. 
Or if I add more base and then it's pink, I know there's more base than acid. So let me know if you have any questions. These calculations can be a little bit tricky. So good luck, and I'll see you next time.